We're gonna have our TV party tonight. All right. We're gonna have our TV party. All right. Tonight. We've got nothing better to do than watch TV and have a couple of brews. Everybody's gonna hang out here tonight. All right. We'll pass out on the couch. All right. And tonight, our favorite shows are All Elite Wrestling, Fight for the Fallen, and Evolve, the 10th anniversary special, brought to you by the good people at the WWE Network, and Tony Khan, not necessarily in that order. I'm your host, the mandated reporter, and frankly, I'm mortified, Mr. Mark Rattledge. And joining me for a TV party compare and contrast as these shows went head to head to head to head to head. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Chris, Chris Bailey, Chris Bailey, Chris Bailey. How do you do, sir? Like, how's it going, eh? <laughs> ah, greetings from up north, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Nobody talks like that, by the way. I, I understand that that's, that's like the Canadian gimmick. Um... By the way, can I get a, can, can I get an I'm the Mountie from you? I'm brave and I'm strong. Let me, let me hear it. I'm the Mountie. I'm brave and I'm strong. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, and joining us once again on the podcast, he's the man they call TMC. How you doing, Tom? How's it going, man? Oh, loaded question. Let's skip it. Um, <laughs> let's talk some wrestling. All right. So, Fight for the Fallen was streamed live on the Bleacher Report app. And then, as I said, Evolve was streamed because the WWE are a bunch of bitches um, <laughs> on the WWE app. Uh, they ran head-to-head, and it, we all know that the only reason why the Evolve show ran on the WWE network was because of Fight for the Fallen, right? We're all in agreement there? But it was scheduled. I mean, it was just a scheduling error. I mean, there's no way they could have done that. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> I, have a, I have a bridge here in Tampa I'd like to sell you. <laughs> so let's talk about it well going into these shows um i'll go over to you first thomas what was your expectations of fight for the fallen versus the evolve show you know just a night of you know a night of wrestling both channels what did you think you were going to get um i didn't really know what to expect of the evolve show because i don't really know much of evolve to be honest i just know that who come from evolve but the show was good. I liked the show. And I liked AEW's fight for the phone. It was more or less the same as the previous shows that AEW were doing. So I enjoyed both, essentially. How about you, Chris? I love that we got our own little wrestling war going on here. So I had uh, I can't say I had super high expectations of AEW because I was sort of, uh, sort of put off the last show that they had. However... Uh, you know what? They came with a with a whole lot of uh, repair fluid on this one, and there was a lot of uh, a lot of differences uh, between two shows between this time and last time. Uh, so you know what? It, it was sort of a mixed bag, but we'll get into that a little bit later. As for Evolve, uh, I've seen some Evolve in the past, and uh, you know it's been hit or miss. It's been super super indie rific. However, I knew with the WWE involved that this was going to be a slugfest, and indeed it was. So you know we had our own little indie war going on here, and it was great. So my expectations were basically, um, look, I, I don't want AEW to fail. Uh, I'm, I'm cheering for them. The criticisms you hear from the Rattle and Broadcasting Network regarding AEW are basically get better because we don't want there to just be a monopoly run by the WWE. We've seen how that's gone. And, Amen. You know, and unless, like I said, until Vince dies, it's going to be what it's going to be, and we want there to be more wrestling out there. So... My, my problems have been, I wish it was better than it is. Um, so my expectations for this show were it was that they would uh, that they would listen to us. No, um, <laughs> they would listen to the criticisms that were out there, and they would make some improvements, make some make some changes. And I think uh, I'll kind of give away some of my thoughts here right off the right off the bat. 
I think they largely made those um, those changes. But we'll get into some specifics. As for Evolve, I've only been to one Evolve show. It was here in Tampa. It was held in a club that's normally looking for bar bands. Um, kind of, you know, two or three rows of folding chairs on either side. And that was about it. And there's some standing room by the bar. Uh, EC3 was at that show. Drew McIntyre was at that show. That was the first time I saw Drew Gulak. I think Zack Sabre Jr. was there. Um, Matt Riddle was there. And, you know, for a night out with my wife and watching some local wrestling, we had, we had a fun show. That was, I think, the one where EC3 plugged, like, an Impact pay-per-view. Um, and, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, um, I think I walked away from that Evolve show thinking Drew Gulak is a star uh, and that he needs to be signed by the WWE and now he's the Cruiserweight Champion. I also, um, uh, Cassius Ono, when he walked out, I think my exact words were, who's that fat fuck and why doesn't he hit a gym in a while? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, but you know, apparently that's, that, that's his look. So... Real quick, here were the results for, uh, and then we're going to talk about both of these shows, kind of compare and contrast them. Um, oh, we had a pre-show on AEW. It was a Sunny Kiss defeating the Librarian, one of them, Peter Avalon, who was with the Uda Librarian, Leva Bates, good old blue pants. Bea Priestley and Shoko Nakajima defeated the ever confused Doctor Britt Baker, DMD, and Riho, who won her last match. Our last triple threat match uh, on the Fighter Fest show. Uh, good old MJF, Sammy Guevara, with a stupid panda on his head. And Sean Spears defeated Darby Allen, Jimmy Havoc, and Joey Janela of Backyard Wrestling, Game Changer Wrestling fame. Yes, he's had a busy schedule lately. And he's got the tax out of his feet. Yes. He's good. Yeah, he's, do- he's doing better. Brandy Rhodes um, with Awesome Kong defeated Allie. The Dark Order, Evil Uno and Stu Grayson defeated Angelico and Jack Evans, or as I like to call them, um, off-brand DX. And <laughs> and uh, a boy and his dinosaur, they're calling themselves, which is the most amazing thing ever. Uh, Jungle Boy and Lucha, Luchasaurus, who I guess Marco Stunt was with them. Also on the Game Changer Wrestling Backyard Show, by the way. Was, uh, the Stunt Brothers had a match against each other. It was quite... Quite light bulb rific. Uh, Adam Page defeated Kip Sabian. The Lucha Brothers, in their 800 millionth match this year, defeat, uh, defeated SoCal Uncensored. Uh, Kenny Omega defeated Shima. And finally, the Young Bucks defeated the Brotherhood of Cody and Dustin. Over on Evolve, um, Josh Briggs defeated Anthony Green in a The Future Is Now showcase. Stephen Wolf defeated Kurt Stallion, Sean Maluda, and Harlem Bravado. By the way, Harlem Bravado, if you just said that name to me, not what I would imagine that guy would look like. Um, <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> no, that, that would be Baba Tunde is who I would have thought that was, but apparently not. <laughs> not, not the case. Uh, Arturo Ruas uh, defeated Anthony Henry in probably one of my favorite matches of the entire weekend. Brandy Lauren defeated Shotzi Blackhot. Um, Baba Tunde defeated Colby Carino who was also on Game Changer Wrestling Backyard Wrestling Show. Oh, my God. Yeah, I know. I was like, where are all these people coming from? Um, A.R. Fox and Leon Ruff defeated Eddie Kingston and Joe Gacy. Matt Riddle, the bro, defeated Drew Gulak. Austin Theory, um, who is the Evolve champion, defeated the Lost... Anderson brother, J.D. Drake. <laughs> exactly what I thought. <laughs> uh, who is the WWN title. I guess they. I guess he, um, he merged the two titles together. Winner take all. He took them all. And then finally, Adam Cole, no shit Sherlock, defeated Akira Tozawa. All right, let me go over to you first, Thomas. I've been, ta- I've been going on and on for a bit here. Um, overall, which show did you like better and what was your favorite match of the weekend? Uh, I loved uh, Kenny Omega versus Shima. Probably my favorite match of the weekend. I, I'll, I'll give props to Gulak and Riddle too. So it's a tie, I would say, between those two matches. As uh, for what show I like more, I think I'm leaning a little bit more towards AEW. 
So offline, we were, you know, Chris and I made our, our thoughts known on which ones we preferred and why we preferred them. What did you think that Fight for the Fallen did right here, more right than Evolve? Um, I feel like their stories are there a little bit better. I feel like their commentators is a little bit better. And I feel like Evolve relied too much on WWE influence than actually what they brought them to where they are now. You're talking about having Adam Cole, Akira Kazawa, and the um, Tazawa, and the Matt Riddle, Drew Gulak matches? Yeah, and you also have Paul Heyman show up in, you know, Philadelphia. Philadelphia, I believe it was. Aired right. Do you think Evolve was being propped up by the WWE versus Fight for the Fallen, which was standing on its own and was furthering their stories? Yeah. All right. The most, def- most definitely. To have Paul Heyman there just to get the pop from Philadelphia crowd. Boy, did it work. I was popping. <laughs> um, so, think, t- thinking about the Fight for the Fallen show, um, here, here's my good. Uh, I really actually liked the, the pre-show. I thought this time around, they didn't do any stupid comedy skits. They didn't, this wasn't a lot of uh, nonsense, you know, sunny kiss, say what you will about this person. I thought he did a hell of a job wrestling. I thought Peter Avalon provided a, you know, a good enough foil for him. Um, I don't know why Leva Bates was there other than she's the librarian and they seem very stuck on this gimmick. But I thought Sunny Kiss and Peter Avalon had a good five minute match. You know, I thought it was solid and, you know, and, they, and there wasn't a lot of screwing around. Uh, and I really like the women's match. I mean, outside of the one boo-boo that Britt Baker made where she ran to the wrong side and forgot which Japanese gal was her partner. Um, <laughs> apparently she was concussed. I, apparently. But I thought Bea Priestley did, you know, I mean, some of it was a bit... I, and maybe this might, might have been just, you know, not unfamiliarity with these girls working with each other, but... Um, I thought uh, Bea Priestley did a really good job. You know, I thought she was a really good addition to the to the roster. Shoko Nakajima, uh, I, I think, is adorable. You know, the little kaiju. I think she's great. Um, Doctor, <laughs> <laughs> I love that as well. Doctor Fritt Baker. I mean, she's she, she can wrestle, from what I've been told. So I'm not entirely sure what happened on this particular night. But you know, she certainly. <laughs> She's fine. Riho's fine. And like I said, a little bit clunky at times, but overall I thought it was a good match. And again, not, not a lot of wasted time. They only had two pre-show matches, so I didn't have any complaints there. I think um, when I look at the length of the matches, 13, 11, 15, 19, 15, 22, 31, they either needed to lose a match or two or cut some of these down. I think this is my problem with AEW in general, and I'll I'll let you speak to this, Chris, and then retort if you need to, Thomas, is that they're overselling the product, I think, in the sense of they feel like every match has to be a 15 to 20 minute epic, and there's no build. There's build in terms of star power and, and, and... uh, expectation. There's not a tremendous amount of build in terms of presentation. It's just, you know, everybody's doing a 20 minute match full of awesome stuff. And unless, like, and unless the matches themselves kind of fall apart, I mean, the, the quality of them is mostly the same, you know, give or, give or take uh, a, a wrestler here or there. So, you know, I, I think I wasn't, I won't go as far as saying I was bored. But I did feel like th- it's like watching a Marvel marathon. You know, it, it's just it's just it's two and a half hour movie after two and a half hour movie after two and a half hour movie, without really building towards, you know, building up towards anything. It's kind of all on the same wavelength outside of the pre-show. Am I wrong there, Chris? Am I am I watching a different product than everybody else? No, sir. I completely agree. So. I think that Evolve started out a little shakier than uh, than I would have liked. I mean, the uh, the pre-show package I want to talk about. So the intro, 
was fantastic. It really set the table. You know, it showed all the past stars that were in the company, really got me excited for the show. And then they did the show open where it looked like the most indie-rific collection of talent you've ever seen in your entire life standing in the ring. And they were saying almost half-heartedly, this is the future. And I'm like, holy shit, we're in trouble. Yeah, that was about the only part of the Evolve show I was like, "You, this is fucking Bush League. <laughs> yeah, it looked it looked really bad. However, that thing improved as we went on. So now on to AEW. Like I'll agree one hundred percent what you said, man. It seems like uh, you know it doesn't feel like they booked the matches. It seems like hey, here's a series of matches on paper. You know, we don't have any discretion in the way that these things play out. Everybody gets twenty minutes. Everybody kicks out of everybody's finisher. There's no. There's no editing, man. Like, somebody needs to come in and rein these folks in. Like, you cannot have everybody kicking out of everyone's finisher in every single match. There needs to be a five-minute match in there somewhere. There needs to be a squash. There needs to be a disqualification. You cannot have every match be a four-star match, and I think that's what they're going for. And when you said overselling the product, I think that was the difference between Evolve and this one. I think Evolve knew and understood that they were... You know, they were the setup league for, you know, the future. They were they were the, the, the world building federation, you know what I mean? They're the talent that are gonna move forward in the bigs. However, AEW feels that they're already in the bigs and that everything they do from Sonny Kiss to you know, to Sammy Guevara and Darby Allen, they they feel that these guys are prime time ready and it's just not the case. I mean, you've got some you've got some big talent in here, but I mean, I guarantee you, I do not want to see another match with the Dark Order. Jack <laughs> Evans, Jack Evans needs to be taken off TV. That guy is broken down. Now, that being said, boy, do they have some great talent moving forward. Uh, you know, a boy in his dinosaur. You know what? I'm into that gimmick. To be quite I honest, I love it. I, I, oh, Luchasaurus really, is my really, new favorite wrestler. Absolutely. Uh, you know what? Adam Page. Guys, this guy is not ready for the main event of that pay-per-view. They need to change that up. If there was ever a time to do a three-way dance, and I don't support that in any way, shape, or form, all the way back to Benoit, Michaels, and Triple H, man. I Like, I cannot stand a three-way, but guess what, man? This match needs a three-way with Jericho in the worst kind of way because yeah. Hangman Page is not ready for prime time, and you know what? The crowd really showed it as well. I mean, you had some great stuff on there. SoCal, on, you know, on Censored versus Pentagon. Gone Phoenix was was outstanding and a little bit of a disappointer in the main event, but uh, man, they had some good stuff on that AEW. But everything is not a four star match, guys. It, it's, a, it's exhausting, is what it is. Yes, yes. Like have a squash. Don't be afraid. Right. Like, look, I, I I'm not all the way there with the Vince McMahon theory of where it's a variety of it's a variety show because then you start doing like stupid comedy skits that aren't very funny. But Absolutely. if if you remember. One of the things about a two-hour Raw back in the 90s, and you can cre- somewhat credit Vince Russo with this, but from what I understand, it was kind of a paella of writers. It wasn't just Vince Russo, so whatever. But, you know, you would get some 20-minute matches. You got some two-minute matches. You got, you, you know, you got palate cleansers. The, that's the way the WWE used to structure their pay-per-views is, like, you know, right before the main event, they usually sent out two models to k- kick each other in the teeth for three minutes. You know, and you could get up, take a piss. You know, it was it was there was just different things going on. They they there was a, a skit here, an interview there, a short match here, a longer match there. You had a nice salad, and then you got to the reason everyone bought the fucking ticket in the first place. And I thought some of those '90s pay per views, or some of those Raws back in the day, and even Nitro to to a degree. You know, it starts you off with some luchadors, and then you know, and the, then they would you know bring out some of the cruiserweights, and you had some of these you know old Crockett era guys that were still hanging around, and then the NWO would come out and murder everybody in their path. Um, Absolutely. And so that's kind of what I want AEW to, to, to focus on, because I think, like I said, with this show, look, if you're one of these people who just wants to see wrestling and good wrestling and everything look tight and neat and solid, okay, there's plenty of that here, but I can't do it for four hours. I, it, I, 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 it was starting to put me to sleep, and it wasn't just the illness talking. Like I just like I stopped stopped caring after a while. I'm like I gotta <laughs> see something else here. All right, now you think felt differently, Tom. You've heard my take on it. You've heard uh, Chris. 
you want to come in and, and say something different here? You want to defend it, or are you with us too, even even this much? Um, I agree. Some of the matches probably could have been toned down a little bit. They were a bit long, and I will give that the crowd seemed like they had the energy zapped out of them, and AEW was going on about how it was really warm there. And But uh, I guess you got to look at the standpoint of, like, if you have WWE, you've you have you you've had hokey gimmicks for the past, I guess, 15 years, and I guess the AEW is appealing to those people that don't want uh, hokey gimmicks anymore. Mm-hmm. So you have just, just plain wrestling. Well, when you have a boy and his dinosaur, I think that pretty well washes it away with Sonny Kiss and the librarians. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. No, I get what Tom is saying, though. He's, he's saying that they, they, people don't want a variety show. They want match, 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 match. They want New Japan is what they want. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't know about that. I guess it's, it's a wrestling show, not entertainment. Right. And I think... I, I, here's the thing. I don't disagree with, with your assessment... I just don't know if the market's there for that. Um, and maybe I'm wrong. You know, I mean, New Japan certainly has keeps going. People keep watching it, and more people are finding the product. So, you know, maybe I'm wrong about this. But I just feel like that's a niche market, and it's only so big, and you're only going to make so much money, and you're and it's very short-term thinking that appealing, appealing to the broader... Let's put it this way. Tolkien only made about eighty million dollars. It appealed to a very niche audience of people who are really into Lord of the Rings and Fox Searchlight indie movies. The Avengers Endgame <laughs> almost made more than Avatar, and it appealed to the bright, the broadest audience possible. That's all I'm saying here. The object here is to make money, but you know there are there are your Fox Searchlight people, and then there's your Avengers people. Um, you know what I mean? Oh, I will I say this. I don't, I don't think either company right now is ready for prime time as it is. I mean, there's no way that Evolve could start a two-hour show, you know what I mean, and pull that off because no. they're basically in the same boat, you know what I mean? Their talent roster is not deep. So a lot of their folks look like they are from, you know, uh, not only an armory but the back of the armory where, you know, <laughs> other stuff is happening. Oh, knows? no, let, let, let's be honest here. If they could have gotten an NXT show in Philadelphia to counter AEW, they would have. But they Absolutely. didn't. Absolutely. This is all they had, so this is what they ran. But this is an in this is an indie feeder organization to NXT. <laughs> so, you know, it, yeah. it was what it was. It, it, you know, it was it served its purpose. Um, but no, this, this they're, they're not they're not ready in anywhere near. They're not ready for a day, for a weekly streaming show, let alone <laughs> let, alone, <laughs> let alone anything else. Um, Tom, any last words about uh, AEW for now? Or because I'll uh, talk a little bit about Evolve. No, I enjoyed the show. That's pretty much the, all I got to say about it. It's, I th- thought it was a good show. I, I felt that it built its characters and its stories a little bit further. Even with Britt Baker and uh, B. Priestley, and you got Sean Spears and his subtle jabs at MGF there. So I think I think storytelling wise, I knew where the next show was leading. Mm-hmm. With Evolve, it kind of just felt like a. Uh, a spot fest cash grab for having WWE guys just come in there when they felt like it yeah. rather than I wouldn't be so if it was just the Evolve guys I think it would have been a better talk right now mm-hmm. I think um, I agree with you a Fight for the Fallen planted more seeds towards their next actual pay-per-view which is All Out um, I, I'm no disagreement there. I think they move the flagpoles along. My, I think my other than the length of the matches and just the lack of variety in terms of uh, how the show is presented. My only other complaint was the check thing at the end and the and the unnecessary knock against the WWE. Like you're you're kind of the talk of the town and the jewel you know the jewel of the Nile right now. Stop. Picking at the WWE, it makes you look low class. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I found it really petty. Petty, yeah. It was very, it, it was very petty. I, I think they should just be them and work on them, and then not worry about what the WWE is because they keep doing this subtle dig. They're always going to be compared to rather than be different. 
Uh, going over to Evolve. Can I, uh, can we? Can I say something about you talked about the check? I want to start with that because this yeah, this ahead. happened in the, this happened in the pre-show. So they had an interview right after the first match. They had an interview with Cody and Dustin. Okay. Now they're talking about you know we we don't do the flip de do thing and you know it's West Coast offense and you know they're all run and gun that type of thing. They're shooting down their opponents, of course. Uh, and Dustin was saying, you know, hey, we, once we start working the body part. Anyway, then they got into the check presentation. And they said a little bit later on, we're going to have a huge check. And they literally said huge. And then, well, I won't spoil the amount, but the amount for a billionaire was uh, probably not what was revealed. <laughs> I don't know if you agree with that. In all fairness, this was money raised, not donated. Again, avoid the word huge when you're talking about uh, a billionaire and 150 grand. Is all I can say. Yeah, right. I, I don't know. I um, I know you guys were talking about it kind of ad nauseum off um, offline in our group chat. Um, I first of all, it was so late in the fucking evening. But by the time the young bucks finally pulled off their victory, an hour and a half later, I was like, "A oh, good, I'm done. I want to go to bed." The CPAP is calling. <laughs> and, oh boy, I pitied I pitied those two tag teams coming so late, late in the night. I mean, even the fans were exhausted. Whether it was heat, I don't know if it was heat. I think it was the length of the damn thing. People just stopped caring. I think it had a one hour time limit too. And I'm like, if th- I think I, I turned to my wife at one point. And I'm like, if this thing goes to an hour, I'm gonna plot. I think it was uh, like ten minutes <laughs> off or something. <laughs> like it, it came down to uh, at the time up here. It came out to 31 minutes and 25 seconds, but yeah, but I think it had like an hour time limit, and I'm like, please don't do a Broadway, for the love of Christ. (laughs) And I've always been a critic of the Young Bucks saying, you know, I wish they would slow it down and stop the flips. Man, I was begging for some flips in this one. I don't know. I don't know. Some some of the action needed some flip de doos and I was not getting it. They were working the body part. I was like, oh, forget what I'm saying. I know not what I I say. I I like the psychology on this one. The Young Bucks were trying to... The Young Bucks are known for 186 super kicks in a match with no psychology whatsoever, is my understanding. And they kept trying to hit the super kick, and they kept getting denied until it was very late in the match. So I like that. I thought, you know, that that, that, that there were at least some psychology there. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. But uh, 20 minutes would have uh, been sufficient psychology in this one, I believe. <laughs> I believe we only get one Canadian destroyer the entire night, though. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's take a break from AEW. Let's talk about this Evolve show here. Now, this Evolve show, see, now we're talking. The first match was 12 minutes long. Maybe that needed some editing, uh, but the the rest, the next three matches, all under 10 minutes. You know, between nine and 10 minutes apiece. Fucking perfect. <laughs> Baba Tunde versus you know who I'm sure someone showed. Uh, <laughs> look, if anyone showed Vince any part of this Evolve show, it was the Baba Tunde match, and only because Baba Tunde was in it. And I'm sure he's picturing <laughs> WrestleMania 37's main event is Braun Strowman versus Baba fucking Tunde. Oh my God, we can dress him in fur and call him Elegante. Uh, oh my God, you know, you, you know, that's where this is headed, right? What, what do you mean we can't have Harlem Bravado in the main event this year? Oh. <laughs> Not ready for prime time. Harlem Bravado, you I, I, I cultural think appropriator. Would, I think he had. It's prime time written all over him. I mean, if he, Harlem bravado in maybe like the Norwegian sense, because that's really where I think like Harlem comes from. It's a uh, it's somewhere in somewhere in Scandinavia, Nor, um, Norway is somewhere in there. I think is what that is what the, that part of the city is named after. Uh, and in that sense, sure, Harlem bravado, I get it. But everybody else thought 125th Street. So goddamn. Um, Hey, if you're in Philadelphia and you got a guy named Harold Provado. <laughs> it's even better. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the first, after you got past Josh Briggs versus Anthony Green, um, which I which I thought was a fun match. Yeah, the next three what matches. What was Anthony Green's gimmick? Like, he looked like he was, obviously, he, it's a retro gimmick back from the retro. but this guy's looked like a slime ball. Like, he did not belong in the wrestling ring. He's, Maybe he's on, like, retro. a pedophile ring or something. I look, don't know. He's not making it to the big time. But, I mean, I, I look, I think if you're looking for, like, fun gimmicks and, you know, and people, for, you know, people, I, easily identifiable characters for people to come to your indie show and boo or cheer, he fits the bill. He's fine. He just, he just looks like a car salesman. 
Like he's a the wrong... greasy one with, he... with horrible chest hair. He's totally the wrong guy for that gimmick. <laughs> I, yeah, I agree. Amen. I agree. Maybe maybe if Joey Janela changes his gimmick, he can go with that. There we go. Um, <laughs> I want to see more backyard shows with Joey Janela. That's my new favorite thing. But that, that's that's a whole other show. Um, anyway, oh, yeah. so that was fine. It was twelve minutes. My could, my could have been about ten would have made me happy, but it's fine. It's whatever. Uh, the next three were, like I said, under ten minutes, nine to ten minutes apiece. You had the four way Arturo Huas versus Anthony Henry, and then Brandy Lauren versus a good old Shotzi Blackheart. Um, the four way was a four way. It was kind of it was kind of a showcase match for these four guys. Uh, I know later on in the night, like Drew Gulak and and Matt Riddle are going to knight Kurt Stallion as like the next catch point wrestler, wave of the future. Maybe if he hits a gym and some gas. He yeah, is you're, you're fucking not kidding, skinny. Brother. Holy Whoa. cow. Unless he's like under, he's under 200 pounds, isn't he? He's like 140 something or 150 or something. I'm not 100% sure, but he's under 200. I think he would, I think he would be significantly challenged by my five year old son who takes no shit from anyone. <laughs> he says, Book it. I think they're trying to play him off as the next king of bros, but this guy looks like he's the bro of welfare, man. He just does not look good in that ring at all. He needs... Like, visually, visu- the guy can wrestle, absolutely. But yeah, sure. Visually, he looks atrocious. Okay, I think we can agree there's a visual element to wrestling. Not oh, just definitely. the wrestling itself, but, like, the presentation. I'm not saying everybody has to look like Batista, but maybe have some muscle tone. He looks like well, a swimmer. Well, if you, know, you, you if you want a, a good comparison, you have him and you have Darby Allen. I would say they're on par weight wise and body figure wise, but Darby Allen paints his face and puts words down his chest, and that puts him over a little bit. Yeah, Dar- Darby Darby Allen looks like he fell off a Misfits album, you know, and then he puts himself through, through like tables and gets his arm broken and whatever else. So there's there's a place for that. Like if like if you're not a body guy. And you have no size to you, but you're willing to mutilate yourself. There's a niche for you in wrestling, so long as you can remain alive long enough to enjoy it. And that's where Darby Allen sits, and that's fine. Absolutely. I think when it comes to body type, I think one guy that really stood out to me that shocked me on this Evolve show was uh, J.D. Drake. I expected nothing out of this guy when I saw him. You know, he's the <laughs> he's the couch potato drinking a Pepsi and having a bag of chips, and this guy could wrestle. You know, his match against Austin Theory was uh, was really good. How did J.D. Drake impressed. not win that match? How do you have a guy who looks who's built like fucking Rick Rude, like Austin Theory, a guy who looks like they should just be throwing N- you know an NXT contract and money at him, and he's the bad guy. And then out comes the garbage man, you know, the lost Anderson brother. <laughs> so one thing one thing that Evolve did great in this thing, I mean, a lot of these people I had not seen before, but they built packages around them. So each person, they had a little, you know, a little tiny vignette about them. And I mean, right. you got to see a little thing about Austin Theory and why was the match was important and who is J.D. Drake. And, you know, it doesn't matter about his size and, you know, his background. Oh, I and, loved it. You know, yeah, you had, you had a little, like, you had a little like drawing card of what you know what this whole event was about, and I think they did a really good job of establishing that. And I think that's one thing that AEW can't say with theirs. I mean, you've got people coming out there, Sonny Kiss. Okay, what is he? I mean, it's pretty clear what he is, but you know, I'd like to see some but background. See, it's Where's not. he from? I, I don't know. Is he gender fluid? Is he in, is he drag? I don't know what he. I is. I, I I believe he's drag. Okay. Uh, he identifies as he so. But see, thanks for telling me. I no one in the show did. That's what I'm uh, saying. Like well, that's what when that's they, what when I mean. they when they introduced him, he was introduced as a he. So I think he's a he's a homosexual male, I believe. All right, this might be not the best comparison, but bear with me here. When Goldust came out, they went like crazy telling you, telling you what Goldust is and what he isn't. And they were they were messing around and playing with the line, and obviously Dustin Reynolds is none of those things, but it doesn't matter. Like if you're going to have it, and, and they made the same mistake. And Jim Cornette even talked about this. They made the same mistake with Nyla Rose. If you have a a public interest story like a like a drag or a gender fluid or a trans wrestler, you need to tell. You need to like 
be like dumb about it. Okay, you need to speak stupid and tell people what this is. So you know, because again, it's not like you've turned into like Freeform or God. What's the show? What's the other network with all like the uh, Bravo? You know, it, it, it's not that. You know what I mean? Where you know people kind of tuning in—that's sort of the expectation. This is wrestling, and I, and look, I'm not saying there isn't a place for it. I'm fine with Nyla Rose. I think she's great. I'm fine with Sonny Kiss. I think he's great. I actually I thought he was one of the more entertaining parts of that show. But I, I would will have, agree. But I would have liked to have known. I would have liked him to talk up a little bit of his history. Talk about you know talk about what she's identifying as. I mean, just saying that he's he. One, I didn't even pick up on it. Two. Like you said, you need to be very, uh, you need to be very broad in your language and and very, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Ugh. You need to sell me on it. Spend some time Absolutely. with this. And I don't. And 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 do you you feel like they did that, Tom, or or do you don't even feel like that any of that was necessary? Well, I, I'm going to go back to what you said on. Um, the first podcast I was on with you that uh, if you don't watch Being the Elite or The Nightmare Family on YouTube you're, you're kind of out of the loop they do introduce Sonny Kiss on Being the Elite and they do introduce Nala Rose and kind of give her a backstory there so mm-hmm. they, they are they are playing to the it, you know who these people are because you follow our career kind of thing well that's a mistake then show those videos that on is the... huge, huge so, yeah, they're, they're, they're not they're not grasping for a casual fan I guess yeah, they need to show they need to show those videos on these shows at least once. Um, yeah, they, they should have vignettes in between matches. Maybe right. that'll that, maybe that'll uh, help with the pace of the. Yeah, the kind of, I, I th- I, and a key to psychology of the entire match is understanding why the match is important and who are these people and why is it important to them. I mean, this is what Evolve did really well. I mean, right. you got to see almost every act had a purpose and a reason for fighting. You understood. AEW was a collection of wrestlers doing flippity doos, and you know, some really good flippity doos, by the way. Um, and Here, I think, yeah, I think it's just too cute by half. You know what I mean? It's just you don't you have this, enough information. I thought the I thought they made leaps and bounds with their production, but cut a match or two, or cut some time and get some more vignettes in there, tell more stories. Back to so back to evolve where where I think you're true. Other than that cold open, which was a pile of garbage, that everyone standing in the ring was I get. One of the things that WWE used to do really, really well, and they've since gotten away from. Do you remember? And this always makes me laugh. But like ninety eight, ninety nine, some of those they would have these like pre pay per view packages introducing the show. That was like footage of Mussolini and shit. It was awesome. Yes, absolutely. They, they had oh god, um, well, pencil neck geek. Uh, what the um, classy Freddy Blassie like narrating yeah. this stuff from a rocking so chair in black and white. It was so good. Like, give me some of that. That's what needed to start evolve. I mean, they and they, they kind of did that. They were like Daniel Bryan, Drew McIntyre, all these guys talking about it. But then, kind of throw together like a nice spiffy package. And then bring the guy out there and be like, the future is now. And then introduce Josh Briggs. That's all I wanted. The, yes. Eh, that's what they should have did. I thought they were doing a battle royal in the, to start with. <laughs> <laughs> I actually try to think I would have preferred a battle royal. At least you could have had Daniel Bryan and Drew McIntyre and all of them show up. Yeah, so it if, if would have been a dollar WWE store battle royal. There, if you had WWE guys there, you might as well bring, like, bring out some big guns. That would have been fun in an Evolve reunion battle royal. So anyway, um, so look, just talking about production, which I think is how we got on this tangent, I think AEW made a lot of improvements, but there's still a ways to go. Whereas, weirdly enough, because I think the WWE was was there to provide adult supervision, the production came off really, really good. Like, very professional. You can tell the WWE production level. Yeah, absolutely. Um, So that being said, just getting back to the matches here... Yeah, that it was Stephen Wolf. The, the four way was fine. Harlem Bravado has got nothing going on and going nowhere. Um, <laughs> Kurt Stallion needs to hit a gym. Uh, Stephen <laughs> Stephen Wolf seemed fine and pro- was probably the right guy to win that match. Um, and yeah, Sean Sean Mulata I thought was was fine too. Honestly, he's I had to I had to look him up real quick. He's not did not stick into my mind. Uh, he was our, in the Cruiserweight Classic, wasn't he? Apparently, yes, he he's was. Simone, didn't he? He's yes. Simone Dynasty. Yes, he is. So I'm he's sorry. a forgotten, 
forgotten Samoan. I'm sure yeah, either sure. I'm sure either Shane McMahon will crush him on a future episode of Raw, or he'll end up being one of Roman Reigns' flunkies. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, it's it's fine. Go go watch TV. Uh, Arturo Huas versus Anthony Henry was probably one of my favorite matches of the weekend because I'm just an MMA. I'm I'm, I'm a real fight MMA type fan, Mark. This was something different, man. This yeah. Arturo Ruas is this is the one guy that stood out on the entire show for me. I mean, just the way he approached the, uh, you know, bringing MMA to the uh, to the wrestling world, you know. And uh, I think Anthony Henry was a good beating post for him too. Those guys made this look good, man. This was one of the uh, unsung matches of the entire weekend. Yeah, I I was a big fan of like one of my favorite my two favorite matches probably in like in the history of professional wrestling since I've been a fan were Owen Hart versus British Bulldog for the European title in Germany. The one that was shot in, apparently was shot in a basement behind a door that says Beware of the Leopard. Um, it, was, <laughs> it was just no lighting at all. Um, it was shown on like an epi- like, a, like a pre-taped episode of Raw, I think. Uh, but, it, but, but like, it's so good and it looks like they're really having a wrestling match. The other one is Chris Benoit versus Kurt Angle for WrestleMania 17. So when you have guys that can kind of approach... That's why I'm a big fan of Matt Riddle. So when you have guys that are like... A, like a, can approach wrestling from that, let's make it look as much like MMA as possible, but still be entertaining point of view style, I really dig it. And these guys looked very... It looked very strong style. It looked very tight. Um, I don't think either one of them really has much of a... Much of a shot at the WWE main roster. But, I mean, for a show like this, I was glad to get a little nibble of something different. What do you think, Tom? Well, I thought it was a good match. Uh, I'd like to see probably either one or two of them take on that lip riddle maybe in the future. It'd be an entertaining match. Yeah, maybe, maybe one of them will get called up. Probably Anthony Henry will get called up to uh, NXT one of these days, you know, as a sort of enhancement talent. The evil Brandy Lauren versus Shotzi Blackheart. I am in love with Brandy Lauren and want to see more of this broad. I heard she got really hurt during this match. Yeah, but they told what a, what a fun story. So it's a no DQ. It's an ODQ match, and she starts off by having the girl Pearl Harbor by an by an equally big <laughs> chick. It was great. I was like, I'm into this now. This is fun. Um, what happened? Do we know what happened to her? Uh, no, I just, just it just popped up on my newsfeed. Okay. Uh, Billy Kidman was doing an interview or something about it. So, well, I hope she's uh, okay. I hope uh, the read up on it. Uh, Chris, what would you think of uh, good old Br- the evil Brandy Lauren versus Shotzi Blackheart? <laughs> Number one, Shotzi Blackheart is my favorite name of the uh, the entire weekend. Shotzi, I, I don't know something about that. I really dig. She's a real uh, mensch. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, Brandy Lauren, uh, interesting. She looks like she could be an NXT valet or something. That girl is definitely not going to be long for Evolve. I think once the McMahon see this girl, I think she's going to be uh, she's going to be pulled into the dirty circle up there in the WWE at some point. Yeah, because I think she has something, and I don't think the uh, the retro guy with the hairy uh, the hairy chest and the uh, the pink shirt is going to be following her. I fear. I fear. No, no, they're going to pluck but, uh, Brandy Ross's fast track to the main roster and. I don't, and she can't be a wrestler, but she. I, I can definitely see her being like a valet for, you know, maybe if Vince dies, EC three, um, <laughs> something along. Maybe Bobby Lashley, you know, just just a body guy who needs who needs someone to talk for him. But she does. But you know what? Who she reminded me of actually? She reminded me of Sunny. You know. Yes, was, absolutely, hundred percent. Very good about being an effective outside bitch heel. Um, and could take bumps and get her ass kicked if needed. I, you know, she has a cute face, a nice body. She looks like she could take a beating, and she was very, very good about being a dick to the to the opponent. You know what I mean? Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, I think I think she came off really, really well. Um, I don't know, I don't know about poor Shotzi, uh, who had to suffer her uh, her abuse, but uh, you know, I think definitely Brandy definitely has a future in the. Outside I mean, of this, I think if Shachi doesn't stop diving into a pile of chairs, she's not going to be long for the wrestling world. <laughs> they had some unique spots in this match. I'll give them. <laughs> I'll give them that. I, lo- I love the fact that they actually sat a lady on the chairs and then did a dive between. Them. That was fun. Yeah. All right. So these next two, good old Baba Tunde, the WrestleMania 38 main event. 
versus Colby Carino of Backyard fame. I'm guessing he is he like a son or a cousin or a nephew of Steve, Steve Carino, Carino, son of ECW fame. There we go. I figured they they look they they looked alike. I figured they were related. Um, so this match was exactly what it needed to be. It was three minutes. It was three minutes and nine seconds long, um, and it was a squash. Babatunde just killed just killed this poor kid. Um, and that led into the Eddie Kingston thing. The Eddie Eddie Kingston is like an SNL player from 1977. Yes, that's, I actually He's, <laughs> he appears on every single show. You cannot escape Eddie Kingston. He will follow you from if you're watching uh, Ring of Honor, if you're watching TNA, you've got Eddie Kingston, Eddie Kingston, Eddie Kingston. This guy is everywhere. Eddie Eddie Kingston is like is great, and he has a, he had a lot of intensity and a lot of heat to him, and totally never going to make it to a main roster anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> Good God, Eddie Eddie Kingston's one of those guys where we're like, well, we've we've already got a Kevin Owens. If he dies, maybe we'll bring you up. Um, and I don't know what. A, <laughs> And I don't know what a Joe Gacy is. If he puts on a clown costume, maybe we got something for him. <laughs> Low. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and they were defeated by, and that, that, that depressed me because I enjoyed, I enjoyed their gimmick. I wanted them to win. Uh, A.R. Fox and Leon Ruff, who did a bunch of flippity doos. I got, I got nothing here. Tom? Uh, sorry about that. It's okay. Little, little dude at my mic. Uh, I understand, uh, you. <laughs> uh, I didn't actually watch much of this match. I kind of was uh, preoccupied watching other things. I think I got kind of bored at this point. Of the show. They were unwanted. <laughs> no, no, yeah, that, that's maybe why I kind of I tuned out because they. I know they cut a promo earlier, and I was like, oh, nah, good. yeah, five it, matches. The, the Bobbitton D. Kobe Carino bled right into this tag team match. It was all kind of one segment. <laughs> What is your what is your child there think? What did he think of Baba Tunde? <laughs> what do you think of Baba Tunde? He, he just wants his nanny. <laughs> okay, I understand. Uh, Matt Riddle with the paper thin Kurt Stallion def- defeated cruiserweight champion Drew Gulak because that title means nothing. Um, Matt Riddle, we've talked about already. We, you know, we hope Vince dies before he gets called up to the main roster because he's future main event material. And Drew Gulak. I don't know why he's on 205 Live. Like, how fucking tall is this guy? I don't know, but, man, this guy really presented well. You talk about a contrast of styles. I mean, Drew Gulak doesn't hold my attention for two minutes on WWE TV. (laughs) Not for two minutes. But yet, you know what? This guy comes out. He's got new ring attire. He's taken serious. He's back to his old gimmick with Catchpoint. And he looked like a star, man. Like, this guy looked like a star against Matt Riddle. And these guys had a hell of a fight. And uh, I would watch, and you know what? I'd actually want to see a Drew Gulak match now after this. But uh, I don't know what in the hell these guys are doing with this guy on 205 Live. He's just, he, he, there's just more to this guy. There's more money to be made with Drew Gulak. Yeah, Drew Gulak is a solid hand. And I enjoyed, like I said, the the, the psychology of this one was a lot of, like, pure wrestling. Um, they... The, there was a there was a handful of knee strikes in this one, but Matt Riddle didn't. You know, this wasn't like when he took on Roderick Strong and he was like Tinkerbell just flying through the air with his knee out um, the entire goddamn match. <laughs> uh, so Matt Riddle and Drew Gulak, I thought, put on a clinic, and you know, it was definitely one of the best matches of the weekend. But it had a point as well, Mark. I mean, they had. Um, I mean, you had. Um... You had Riddle, who you know, who was apparently approached by Catchpoint before, right. previously. So they told that story and they build that story. And even when the match ended, you know, uh, Riddle went over, and they still represented the entire Catchpoint gimmick at the end with you know the shaking hands and the show of respect. And I, I don't know, man. This this was just a really really solid solid match for both guys and a real good presentation, real good part of the show here. No, yeah, it was it was, it was solid. It was a welcome addition. <laughs> Um, so I said before, how do you build a guy like J.D. Drake? How do you make that package about him, make him so sympathetic, and beat him like a fucking drum? <laughs> how is this? Did this Vince guy, McMahon guy, get personally involved in this? This guy is the the blue-collar hero, and I think that's what I took out of this. I'm like, yeah, you know what? This guy's fat. He's like me. You know, he's uh, he, I can go out there and have a match like this. This is you should have uh, won, don't you? Yeah. That's what I'm that's what I'm bellyaching about. Like for the most part, everyone who won, and I would say that for Fight for the Fallen as well, 
almost everybody who won, I thought should have won. I thought it was absolutely this was, this was right booking in regards to who was winning. I'll agree with you there. Right. This one, this Austin Theory versus JD Drake, I thought was booked ass backwards. Like, like Austin Theory yes. should have beat his fat ass from one end of the ring to the other, just made bacon out of him. And then J.D. Drake just, you know, a, like if one match on this show should have had blood, it should have been this one. And then J.D. Drake, full of blood, comes back and kills Austin Theory and, you know, and wins both titles because fat guys of the world unite. <laughs> Amen, brother. <laughs> and instead, it's like Rick Rude, be, you know, fucking beat up, uh, I don't know, Tugboat. Like, all right. Seems a little anticlimactic, <laughs> but whatevs. What do you think, Ted? I, I, I think that they were trying to put over Austin Theory as the good guy, but uh, the guy comes <laughs> up as, as a super prick. Who, 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 who the producers of Maleficent? <laughs> who thought that was? Who thinks Austin Theory comes off like the good guy? I keep saying he's like I, aping I, Rick Rude. I think it, I think the intention was that he was, uh, you know, he's worked so hard and, you know, he's in shape and, you know, he, you know, he thinks the other guy's just not passionate enough like he is. You know, he's not coming out and saying he's a heel, so they're not, they're not positioning him as, you know, spitting on the fans and, you know, showing off his body. He's just saying, you know, I've worked hard for what I am and I'm yeah. the champion and all that stuff, good, right? So, good, I mean... Good story. The pretty muscle guy is the, 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 the pretty muscle guy is the uh, is the hero and the villain is the guy that just got <laughs> off his job at the fucking hostess fake factory. Get the fuck out of here. Yes. <laughs> you want to weigh in here, Tom? Am I, am I wrong here? Or do you, do you agree Austin Theory should have lost that match? Uh, I don't know. It's kind of like... It's kind of hokey. It's very hokey. It's kind of like watching a... A professional beat up like a circus clown kind of thing to me. <laughs> oh, leave JD Drake alone. He, he's trying so hard. I mean, you can't tell by his body, but you know. Look, there was a time where for every Rick Rude, you had a Kamala. For every Ivan Putsky, you had a tugboat. You know, they were, they were, they, yes. there was your adorable Adrian Adonises and your Roddy Pipers. There was Man. room for fat people. <laughs> Fat Man. people, ladies and gentlemen. Mantar. Bastion Boss Booger. Booger. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. What happened to just plain old fatsies in wrestling? Like J.D. Drake. Indeed. All right. La last one here, and then I think we're going to wrap up uh, this hour of uh, our compare and comparison here. I'll throw it to you guys because I honestly don't have much of an opinion on, on the match. Uh, go to you first, Tom. Adam Cole versus Akira uh, Tozawa, which they were anchoring this entire show to. Adam Cole is, I guess, an Evolve alumnus, and Akira Tozawa is uh, Asian. Okay. Uh, I, I actually enjoyed this match. Uh, only thing I didn't enjoy about this match. <laughs> Apparently so did he. Yeah, the only thing I didn't enjoy the about the match was the opponent Adam Cole had. I feel what? like they could have done ten times better with the opponent. It's kind of just like they threw him in there, and it was that was it. Okay, they they just picked, they just kind of threw a dart and hit an opponent. Yeah, it's kind of like who do we got here that's not doing anything at the current moment? Because I was not doing anything. We should get him to do this match. I yeah, feel like anybody could have been a better fit for Adam Cole in this match. You know, it would have been great for the show if you had Daniel Bryan taking Adam Cole in this match. That would have. There you go. That would have that been, been fantastic. That would have been. That would have beat anything AEW did the entire night. Or here's a wild and crazy thought. How about EC3? At least he's been in Evolve before and doing that absolutely guy's nothing. That guy's a Jabba. That guy's a Jabba. Yeah, but EC EC3 is <laughs> going to be beat up by like Bobby Lashley and Braun Strowman. Forever going to be a, a Jabber now. So you just Whoa. have you just have Adam Cole destroy him in like a minute flat. <laughs> uh, Chris, go ahead, Chris. Okay, so I think um, I think Tom is right considering when you talk about Akira Tozawa. I mean, they even said that the guy has no history with uh, with Evolve. I mean, he's only shown up on one show, so he's come from Dragon Gate USA, which is a little bit of a botch product when you think about it. Because I mean, you know, their their lifespan was uh, was almost nil when it came to. Uh, when it came to the U.S., you know what I mean? They had a small footprint. I mean, they had some great shows. They had some great crossovers with ROH. 
But uh, Tazawa seemed a little bit of a weird, weird choice for this match. Um, Adam Cole, of course, you know, standout guy. Uh, I'm glad that the main event was an NXT title match, or not a title match, but, you know, the NXT champion was in there. It really showed, uh, I don't know, just a good, solid match back and forth. Um, there was nothing really outstanding about it. I think there was better matches on this card, honestly. But a uh, good way to end the show. Adam Cole was super hot, super over. Uh, Tazawa did the job like he should. So that's all right. about all I got to say about that. So there it is. There's your compare and contrast to Fight for the Fallen versus Evolve. Um, I think Evolve, I said, had slightly had slightly more cleaner, better production than Fight for the Fallen. But Fight for the Fallen was a leap in improvement over AEW. Absolutely. This, this one, I think, also your mileage may vary. If you're more, if you're sort of a conditioned, like I am, WWE fan, the Evolve show probably appealed more to you. If you're more of the New Japan type, you know, where you just want 20-minute, 20 20-minute, 20 20-minute 20 matches, 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 then you probably you probably fell more along the lines of, of enjoying the AEW show fan more. And I think, ultimately, if you're a wrestling fan, you, you won. You know, you got a great weekend full of really fun wrestling on, you know, between the between the two shows, you got some really solid wrestling. And I think that's all you can ask for. So with that said, I just dropped my phone. Um, <laughs> with, with that said, guys, uh, just for time here, um, we're going to do we're going to end this show. And then uh, if you go to the Rattle Gym Broadcasting uh, archive through Podcoin or iTunes or whatever app you're using, you'll also find the show we're going to record next, which is a review of Extreme Rules. So um, we're not going to do a whole bunch of plugs right this second. We're going to say, uh, see you in a minute. Mark, are you patching in Sheehan? One sec.